And here we go. It's the Super Bowl LIV, or 54 for the non-Roman numeral crowd, edition of Tomlin's Tips, the podcast that gives you all the football bets you could ever want or need. I'm your host, Michael Tomlin, and this podcast is brought to you, as always, by FantasySixPack.net, an industry leader in fantasy football and betting content. We have some NFL draft posts about the Senior Bowl and possible landing spots for rookies. Our fantasy baseball draft kick is about to get into full gear. And my weekly football bets car article is currently up with all the bets I'm going to be talking about in a written form, so be sure to check it all out. So let's start with last week, as both games had the flow I was really expecting. My read on the 49ers was spot on for the second week in a row. They got an early lead. They got after the quarterback with the front four. They gashed the Packers with their run game. They sustained long drives, and they held the late comeback. Held off the late comeback. I can't remember a team having such an easy time, really, through the first two playoff games leading to the Super Bowl. They haven't trailed in either game, and they've held the lead for both entire second halves. Now, the Chiefs-Titans game was similar to my handicap going into the game as well. Tennessee got an early double-digit lead. Derrick Henry was able to run all over the Chiefs, and then Pat Mahomes led a furious comeback. If not for a late DPI call, the Titans would have been driving for the backdoor cover and giving me a 4-0 weekend. Nevertheless, I'll take 3-1. So for the Super Bowl 54 edition of Tomlin's Tips, I'll break down the game, give my pick and score prediction, then I'll dive into the endless stream of prop bets. The one thing I want to say about props is that you want all of your bets to tell a story. Now what do I mean by that? That means the best way to figure out the narrative is to find your ending first i.e. a final score range. Once you have the way the game will end in your mind, you can start fitting your prop bets in to make it make sense. For example, if you think the Chiefs are going to blow the 49ers out, then you go over on all the Mahomes props and under on the San Francisco running backs. If you think it's going to be a low-scoring game, you go under on all the scoring props. The point is you want your bets to work in accordance with each other and not against each other. Because the worst thing is at the end of the day, you go 10 and 10 on prop bets, but you're down a couple hundred bucks from juice. This is especially true with the heavy juice that some of these props have, too. You'll look at some, and it's minus 150 one way, and then minus 110 the other. It just doesn't make sense, but that's why they do it, because the prop bets have a lot less accuracy for the bookies as a normal side bet. But anyway, let's get into the game. Sunday night, Super Bowl 54. 5.30 5.30 Central Time from Miami Gardens, Florida. Kansas City Chiefs are laying one and a half points to the San Francisco 49ers. I think you can get it at one some places. The over-under currently is 54 and a half. A plus 104 money line for San Francisco and a minus 128 for the Chiefs. Some opening trends for both teams. Kansas City comes into the game winning and covering eight straight depending on your final LA Chargers line. They're covering these games by nearly 10 points. That's over the spread. They're not just winning by 10 points a game. They're beating the spread by 10 points a game. Kansas City is also 10-4-1 against the spread as a favorite this season. They're the top team in the Jeff Sagarin ratings, although San Francisco is number two. Both of them had a similar strength of schedule. As you know, I've been talking about that for the past couple of weeks. Kansas City went 4-2 against the other top 10 teams in the league in Sagarin ratings, while San Francisco was 7-2. No other team in the league had a better record than these two in such games. What I'm getting at there is I think these really are the two best teams in the league, and that's rare in the Super Bowl if you really think about it. A lot of times there's a little bit of a lucky team that just had the ball bounce their way. These two teams have completely dominated in the playoffs. Uh, And if you don't think that's the case, check out Eli Manning's Hall of Fame resume. San Francisco is covered by the, the spread by nearly a touchdown themselves over the past month. They're 5-0 and against the spread and 4-1 and straight up as an underdog this season. And at, when they are an underdog, they've covered the spread by more than 12 points a game. Kansas City has gone over the total in 9 of the last 12 non-divisional games. And they also have 3 straight overs after 5 unders in a row. Now, I think that five under streak, that was right when Mahomes came back. So I think they might have held back a little bit as they blew some teams out. San Francisco has five overs in their last six games and nine overs in the last 12 games. So let's get some overall matchups of the two teams between just their two units. San Francisco was fourth best on offense per pro football focus. Kansas City was sixth. 
However, San Francisco was the second best defense in the league, and Kansas City was 24th. There's similar rankings over at DVOA, except Kansas City's defense was slightly better, but still well below average. San Francisco's receivers were the best in the league at getting open per pro football focus. Kansas City was 18th in coverage. San Francisco was the 5th best running team in the league, while Kansas City was 29th against the run. Now, both teams were top 4 in the league in yards per play, but San Francisco was best in the league at defensive yards per play. Kansas City was just above league average there. A big advantage for San Francisco is in time of possession, where they were 4th and Kansas City was 21st. One area Kansas City can't exploit the 49ers is in the red zone both ways. Kansas City was 13th offensively and 8th defensively in converting touchdowns in the red zone. San Francisco was 21st and 25th in those two categories. Now let's get to my individual matchups and handicap. First thing that kind of sticks out to me here is in most Super Bowls, there's an advantage as far as people who have been there. In, in all but one Super Bowl since 2008, both one of the two quarterbacks had been to the Super Bowl. This neither, neither one obviously has. It's Jimmy G's first playoff run. It's Mahomes' second playoff run. There's only been a few guys on either team, none that important outside of Emmanuel Sanders and Richard Sherman, who have even played in the Super Bowl. Now, with that out of the way, that leaves a lot more to these individual matchups. For me, George Kittle is the key. Kansas City gave up the fourth most yards and the second most catches to tight ends this year. When they played top 13 fantasy tight ends, they averaged seven catches and 73 yards a game against the Chiefs. Just going down the line, Darren Waller had six for 63 and then seven for 100. The Ravens tight ends had nine for 87. Kyle Rudolph had three for 23, but he did get a score. The Titans tight ends had seven for 66 and a touchdown, then four for 60 and a touchdown. Then Hunter Henry had 6 for 69 yards and 5 for 42 with the touchdown. The, the Chiefs just haven't been good at, at covering the tight end, even though they have two good safeties. I think it's because their safeties are a little over-aggressive. I saw some today over at ESPN where they kind of roll to cover two sometimes, but with that, one of their safeties is rolling down. And so when that happens, he's over-aggressive on the under routes, and that can leave the tight end open outside. The thing is, though, Jimmy G will not have to throw it too much because the 49ers' backs will be able to run all over the Chiefs' 29th-ranked run defense. San Francisco was 4th in the league in yards per carry. Kansas City was 27th in yards per carry allowed. The 49ers' linemen will be able to get to the second level, leaving the safeties for the Chiefs to have to make open field tackles on some shifty backs. I think Tevin Coleman will still play as of now, I dislocated my shoulder quite a few times, and it was usually about a two-week recovery. The thing is with the, with the 49ers is Kittle and Hooschek give them two extra offensive linemen. They use so much motion in the backfield and with the receivers is that they find the advantage at the point of attack where they can use Kittle and Hooschek to then always have the numbers advantage at the point of attack where they're running the ball, and that's a huge problem for the Chiefs who have had trouble stopping the run. All in all, I think the 49ers get out to an early lead. They're third in the league in first quarter scoring, and Kansas City is 28th in the league in first quarter points allowed. The run game will be able to stay in long drives again, keeping Mahomes off the field, and forcing him, him into quicker, more pressure-filled situations. And then the 49ers' defense is good enough to withstand the inevitable comeback. For my game pick, give me the 49ers 33-29. Now, obviously, we know with the Super Bowl, just betting on the game is not the only thing you can do. I mean, it's America. we got got thousands of prop bets now. But first, I'll go with over 54.5 in the game. They're, these are two of the three high-scoring teams in the league, both right around 30 points a game. I don't think the Chiefs will be able to stop the 49ers from reaching that 30 mark. And the Chiefs have scored less than 23 points just once all season. So that right there, that's 53, and so anything extra that, that's bonus. So the over's strong. Even more so, I like the over for the first quarter, the second quarter, and the first half. A lot of times people bet under in this situation because they people think the teams come out timid, they're thinking too much about the game, and it's the Super Bowl, and the extra, extra pregame stuff that goes on gets them out of their rhythm. However, I think that 
the the 49ers will probably want the ball to try to get that early lead on the Chiefs and be able to drive down on them, and then you got Mahomes already coming back. The first quarter line is currently at 10 right now, and the second quarter line isn't out, but it should be around 16, considering the first half over under 26.5. I already showed that San Francisco will be able to get up to early lead in the first quarter, but both teams are top five in the league in second quarter scoring as well as overall first half scoring. Now, I'll still do a 10-point teaser of the week, even though there's really only a couple options. Some bookies won't even let you do it, but online you usually can. But with the current lines, you can get the Chiefs plus 8.5, 49ers plus 11.5, over 44.5. I think this is actually the best bet of the game, because these teams are close. It's going to be a close game, and I think they'll at least be 45 points scored. So honestly, that's probably my best bet of the week. Now let's get into the props. The first prop is the first prop you can get paid on on Sunday. Demi Lovato, National Anthem, under 124.5 seconds. That's 2 minutes, 4.5 seconds. In my article, I linked three different Demi Lovato National Anthems. One was in the 2015 World Series. She went a minute 58. One was in the 2011 World Series. She went a minute 49. The last one was in the Mayweather-McGregor fight in 2018, and that went 2 minutes and 10 seconds. So some people are pointing out that she's gotten longer as the years go on and she's more comfortable. I think the main key here is where the games have been played. She does have the poise and restraint to pause a little bit in the song. However, she doesn't really hold the notes out. That's not her singing style in general, especially live without autotune. The Mayweather McGregor anthem is the longest she could ever go, really, and that still barely cleared this over. Moreover, I think the fact that boxing match was inside an arena with better acoustics pushed that. The number is also 17 and a half seconds uh, longer than last year's and almost a half minute longer than a few years ago. In an outdoor stadium with 100,000 people, I think she shortens it up and the end is good here. Side note, last year, the afternoon of the game, word leaked out of the rehearsal that Gladys Knight was clearly going over a minute 47. She ended up going 201. I tweeted out then and I will again if I see any changes in it. So be sure to follow me at Tomlin3 on Twitter. Now the actual game bets. I'm going to go under in all the Jimmy G props. 29.5 pass attempts, 18.5 completions at plus 142, under 1.5 touchdown passes as well. Jimmy G has hit the over on any of these marks just twice in the past eight games. Since Garoppolo threw that interception in the Minnesota game a few weeks ago, the 49ers have run the ball 72 times and passed 14 times. Their offensive line is creating these wide-open holes for their three electric running backs to exploit. If the 49ers get out to a lead, they're not going to let Jimmy G hit these marks. With that said, I'm also going over on George Kittle's 5.5 receptions at plus 142, over 73.5 receiving yards. When Garoppolo does have to throw, I think it's going Kittle's way almost exclusively. As I said earlier, the five times Kansas City faced a top-13 tight end, they average giving up seven catches for 73 receiving yards. That's half a yard under Kittle's receiving yard and over his reception total. George Kittle is much better than Darren Waller, Hunter Henry, or Mark Andrews, and is more crucial to the 49ers offense. So with all that said, he is my best bet for MVP at t- plus 1,200. Another flyer on MVP, though, is Matt Breda. Early in the week, I got him at 200-1. to 1. Crazy, I know. I think now he's about 50 to 1 if he's listed, but that's worth 10 or 20 bucks. Other shot of the quarterback spectrum, I'm going with Patrick Mahomes to throw a second quarter touchdown pass. I'm also going to bet that Patrick Mahomes will have two plus touchdown passes in a single quarter at plus 250. I'm also going over 30 and a half rushing yards plus 115, although that might have climbed even higher by the time you hear this. Mahomes has seven passing touchdowns over his past four second quarters, so almost two a quarter. And he was 51 seconds away from an eighth. As I've repeatedly said, I think San Francisco gets out to an early lead. And that will mean Mahomes will be playing comeback already in the second quarter yet again. Because of the length of San Francisco's drives, I like the odds that Mahomes gets those two throws in the second quarter as he's trying to get one in right before the half. I also think the San Francisco up front pressure by the front four will force Mahomes out of the pocket into more rushing attempts as a rushing game won't be, as, won't be worth anything anyway. With that said, I'm going under 13.5 rushing attempts for Damian Williams and under 1.5 rushing attempts for Darwin Thompson. I do not think the Chiefs will have many running plays called at all. 
San Francisco is fifth in the league against stopping the run per pro football focus. Once again, if Kansas City is coming from behind like they've had to the past couple weeks anyway, they will not be calling these running plays. On the defensive side of the ball, I like both Daniel Sorensen and Tyron Matthew to have more than five and a half tackles. Tyron Matthews at plus 115 in that. San Francisco's offensive line is one of the best in the league about reaching the linebackers. When the offensive line is reaching that second level, the third level is then expected to make the plays on the running backs. The two safeties to the Chiefs will have to come up and make stops in the run game, and they'll also have many times where they're matched up with Kittle and have to bring him down after he has a catch. I'm also going with the 49ers to score first. I mean, I just need to go with all my game script, right? Might as well put that in there. I really like two-point conversion attempted at plus 125. There have been five two-point attempts in the last three Super Bowls leading up to last year's snooze fest. Eight of the last ten Super Bowls have seen in a two-point attempt made. These odds are a little bit skewed because these two teams went for two less than the other team. Well, why is that? I think it's mostly because they were blowing people out, so they need to go for two in the fourth quarter when they're up 20. I also like under 1.5 yards for the shortest touchdown. It's a little bit extra juice at minus 150, but I feel like it's still a solid bet, mainly because of the pass interference probability in the end zone with those two elite tight ends. I also like, yes, that there will be a score in the last two minutes of the first half. Now, this one, you got to lay minus 350. That's a bit ridiculous. It's killer. But I think it might be the biggest lock of the day. I get not wanting to lay it, but I can almost guarantee it will hit between these two offenses. I like total punts under 6.5, plus 135. Both of these teams are more aggressive on fourth down than most, and they punted almost less than anyone. If you combine their punts each of the last two rounds of the playoffs, it was 6-5. and five. I also like total players with a pass attempt under two and a half. Both of these coaches are known for the creative offensive schemes, not exactly just trickery. There are only three passing attempts by non-quarterbacks in their 36 combined games in the regular season, zero in their four postseason games. Two correlated props is I like San Francisco third down conversions over five and a half plus 115 and San Francisco total rushing yards over 137 and a half. I think the way that San Francisco will gash the Chiefs' run defense will set up plenty of easy third-down conversions. I feel like I'm almost being had by that 137 number as I would have gone well past 150. saw a stat earlier today that San Francisco averaged 7.5 yards per first down, but they also ran the ball more than anyone on first down. That just shows you they'll be popping them on first down and get second and shorts, leading to more third-down conversions. I like the Kansas City total rushing yards under 88.5. I think the only way this loses is if Pat or Damian Williams breaks a long one. The 49ers' longest rush allowed this season was 40 yards, and they only gave up two touchdown runs longer than eight yards. I'd like to also bet the 49ers to win by four to six points at plus 1,200. Everyone likes to give their score prediction out. Well, I like to put my money where my mouth is. I mean, what's, what's better, if you're on spot on with a game and you get kudos, or you get 12 to 1 in cash? I'd also like to go over on Debo Samuel's rushing yards. I th- as more I think about it, I think they're going to run a little more sweeps with him and really get him involved early so that he can be have that extra speed threat on the outside to give those Kansas City safeties a little something else to think about. Two cross sports bets, although one of them might be in jeopardy now that Luka has sprained his ankle, but I really like Chiefs plus four and a half team points over Luka Doncic points against the Hawks. And I also like 76ers first quarter points plus 2.5 over Jimmy G pass attempts. Here are a couple really fun cross sports props. Luke is averaging a smidge under 30, so this feels off to begin with since San Francisco's projected to score 27 by the line, 27.5 really. So he's they're already getting two points by the line. I think the Mavericks will have a sizable lead on the Hawks, and Luke will not have to do much in the fourth quarter, let alone now that he might have sprained his ankle if he even plays. I've also already said that Jimmy G does not have that many pass attempts. Furthermore, Philly could blow up for a 40-plus point of quarter, and if they do that, there's no way Jimmy G is catching that. That's it for my Super Bowl 54 edition of Tomlin's Tips. Thanks for listening, and as always, may all the coin flips go your way.